Hello there. This is Billy. Long time no see. Today I'm showing you the video of how I make this watch crystal radio. Yeah, something you can wear on your wrist. I had this idea when I saw a post of a watch crystal radio manufactured in the very early days, where they have a ferrous stick put in and out of a coil to tune the radio. And in my design, I changed that into a knob on the watch where you can tune to different stations. For detector, I'm using a five pin socket where you can choose to put in a MOS FET or a diode or a crystal or even a detector made of a credit card smart chip. If you have been following my video, you can look at the video. I show you how to test any two pins out of that uh, smart credit card to find the two pins you can use as the detector or a diode. For the wristband, I just borrow the one I have for the Apple Watch. Uh, like all crystal radio, this one also works without battery. Some people call that free energy, but actually someone is paying for the electric bill. The broadcaster of the radio station is paying for it. You're just receiving the broadcast, turning the energy from the uh, wireless signal into the energy or the electricity you can use to power your headphone or earbud. When I first looked at crystal radio as a kid, I find this bit very attractive. That's why I am absorbed into making crystal radio until now, uh, at my age of 58. Now let's take a look at the circuit diagram. I posted two diagrams, one for the diode, the other one for the MOS FET. Let's first look at the diagram for the diode. You see there's a number of uh, tapping points for the antenna. A1 is for the short telescopic antenna. A2 and A3 are for longer antennas, like more than 10 meters long antennas. Of course, you need to connect the ground if you're indoor, but when you're outdoor, if your signal strength is sufficiently big, a telescopic antenna will do. That will be like you are within five kilometers from the transmitter of that radio station. In the resonance circuit we have a coil, or actually two coils, and two capacitors. They will form the resonance circuit because the variable inductance of my uh, ferret ring and coil combination cannot meet the nine times uh, variable inductance value from minimum to maximum. Um, in that case it can't tune to the entire AM frequency band which is from 500 kilohertz all the way up to 1700 kilohertz. Because of that I need to uh, fix it by using two different fixed capacitor. The C1750 PF is for tuning to the lower band of the AM frequency. For C2, 220 PF is for tuning to the higher band of the AM radio frequency. On the output side, the C3 is the filtering capacitor. You get rid of the radio frequency or the high frequency which is not audible to the ear and this way it will make your radio more effective because the uh, high frequency bit will uh, be able to circle back to the resonance circuit and, and make it better. Um, the output impedance need to match with your headphone or earbuds impedance. Uh, for most of the output impedance of the diode is between 5 kilo ohm up to uh, 10 kilo ohm 
or some will have as high as 20 or even 100 kilo ohm so it really depends on what type of diode you are using you can also put in a step down transformer sometimes the 110 volts to 12 volts electric transformer will work uh, otherwise you can use the um, radio output transformer like those uh, that are uh, provided by some manufacturers at the both chain as T751 or there's some other manufacturer in China that created those step down transformer I will put the parts in my blog so you can look at that to determine where you get it um, you can also create a DIY crystal radio earbud using a uh, piezoelectric buzzer you just connect the two wire to the output of this crystal radio and then you make a audio conduit channel using the tip of a ball pen or some similar uh, stuff around you just take it in and put a cushion out of an existing hi-fi earbud onto it so you won't hurt your ear but there are many ways to find ways to create your earbud or purchase one next let's look at the circuit diagram for the MOS FET the MOS FET performs better than the, some of the diodes for a weak signal strength but if you have a very strong signal strength the diode will perform better meaning the output current will be much higher sometimes you can even drive a speaker using it uh, for the MOS FET it can still drive a speaker but much lower volume even if you have a very strong signal Uh, it's similar to the diode the only difference is you need a second coil to drive the MOS FET uh, the SPO there you need an extra coil to drive that some people may tap it um, using a tapping point of about uh, 1 12th of the number of turns you have in your resonance coil you tap that out and, and make that a input for the S pole of the MOS FET, that works for some sometimes, but the better way is to create a second coil outside of the resonance coil. Uh, it will sound a bit better if you do that. But if you don't want to make all the trouble of creating another coil, just tapping it as part of the resonance coil will also work. The formula people use are different for the SPO. Um, some people use 1 12th of the number of turns counting from the grounding point um, as a tapping point for the for the SPO. Some other people use uh, 1 6th of the total number of turns. It's really up to up to you and test it out. Okay, so the number of turns in my circuit diagram you can just make a reference depending on what type of uh, forward core you are using you may need to increase and decrease after your trial to ensure a high Q factor I'm using this list wire it has 60 threads each of 0.04 millimeter threaded together to form one wire so it has a high Q factor because of the increased surface area provided by the 60 different wires strands together. For the ferret turret core, you can use this high Q factor core for crystal radio called R4TC1. It has different size. The one I'm using is a bigger one, 45 millimeter in diameter. Uh, which fits with the model I have designed. Let me show you my 3D design 
I designed it using Fusion 360. I first started off with a box, then I put some frame for the coil and the rotating arm where you will hold the forward core, the R40C1. And then I created the bevel gear at the bottom. This is the part where I spent most of my time making sure the baffle gear runs smoothly and making them fit. And finally we have the cover. So the entire model is created like that using Fusion 360. I will uh, put the link to the 3D model files that you can download and print using uh, Fingerest website. Once you download it, you see these files, they have the extension of 3MF, which after that you need to process this file using a slicer software. Um, the one I'm using is called Ultimaker. There are many other different slicers that will convert this file to the G-Code file that you will need to insert to your 3D printer to be printed. So this is a display of all the 3D models you need to print one by one and the printing time at the bottom right. This one is the chassis for the watch and you have a lot of uh, labeling. This is the cover. This is the coil where you insert one of the forward core into it. This is the rotating arm where you put the other half of your forward core into it. The arm will then push and pull the forward core in and out of the coil to create the variable inductance. This is part of the baffle gear, the bigger one, I call it the ring gear, that will drive the rotating arm, that will do the tuning. This is the small baffle gear that will drive the ring, it's connected to this knob. We can start making it once the parts are ready. First thing is you need to use a cutter uh, with a diamond plated blade to cut your forward ring into two halves. And one of the half you need to uh, grind it into this shape so it can move in and out of the forward uh, of the frame easily. For the second half you just squeeze it into the bottom of this frame. See the uh, the top core is moving in and out of the frame for the co coil. That's why you need to uh, grind it into this shape. Otherwise it will be very hard to move it in and out. Then you have the chassis. Just remove all the braces away so it can be smooth in and out. Then you need to wire the coil with the list wire. Uh, this is how I finish it. So let's start the assembly. We'll first put in the ring gear at the bottom. Then slot in the moving rotating arm. As a notch there you need to match. That will make sure it won't slip when they move together. Then we need to find a very small screw, a two millimeter type, and just squeeze the two parts together. Make sure it's fastened but not too tight. Still allow it to turn smoothly. Next, we need to put in this baffle gear. One end of it is a small notch. On the other end, there's a hole. So make sure you put the side where the bench switch, the high-low one is. Um, then you can find a knob. There's a notch in the knob as well. Just fit it in, matching the 
notch direction so it will be fastened with the baffle gear again to find a small screw two millimeter tight and just fasten the knob with the baffle gear now let's test if uh, we can turn the knob smoothly to drive the baffle gear and then in turn drive the rotating arm at the top which will hold the ferret core next let's put in the coil frame with the coil already worn on top of the frame um, so we need to align the four holes um, and put in the M4 screw later there are two small holes in the chassis where you can pass the tapping points and, and the wires from the coil to the inside of the chassis then we can uh, do some soldering There's some wire with the contact plates and an M4 screw which will function as the tapping point of the antenna and ground as well um, they have the matching size with my telescopic antenna which is a female connector for M4 you can repeat that for the other four M4 screws and put the whole frame in place complete the soldering and audio, also the audio output jack you can just fit into the hold I prepare in the design for hosting that uh, audio output jack now let's start some testing first we do the indoor testing with a long antenna 15 meters Do you want to stay vigilant against unexpected documents launched for registration against your property? If you do, the Land Registry's Property Alert Service can serve you well. Property owners subscribing to the service. Lucy 你看看現在這個牆this is the end of my video thanks a lot for watching you can find the links in my youtube channel description uh, where to go to find all the files reference here and the parts um, to purchase again thanks for watching if you like my video please click like subscribe share with your friends 
and remember to click the bell so I can notify you on my next video. Thank you.